Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to be taking a look at designer babies and cloning. So in order to take the notes on this video, you're going to have to number your notebook all the way to page 158. So number all the way to page 158. We're actually going to skip some pages because we're going to put the endocrine system in between this and what you're going to write down right now for the notes. So this video, you're going to take the notes for this video on page 156. Okay, so page 156. So number your notebook and then on page 156 you're going to take notes on designer babies and cloning. So first let's go ahead and start with designer babies. So designer babies, the reason why they're called designer babies uh, kind of is connected to like designer clothing where you, you, you know, you pick all this nice stuff and plus designing as well. So we actually get to pick and choose. So the concept of designer babies basically is that we could choose what traits we pass on to our children. Now, for all this genetic engineering stuff that we're looking at in this video and the next video, we're looking at how we can manipulate DNA. So here with designer babies is how we can ensure that our ch children, our babies, get certain traits passed on to them. Now, there's going to be current reality and future possibilities for each one of these. So right now, the current reality with designer babies is that we can actually take the sperm and egg from a male and a female that want to have children and actually go through and find the ones that we want that have the traits we want to pass on to our children. That's not for every trait though. Um, right now it's, it's very minimal. So we have uh, the ability to look through sperm and egg and find certain eye colors, hair colors, skin colors, and hair textures that we want to pass on to our children. And there's actually a clinic in uh, Los Angeles that actually shut down not too long ago, it was actually doing this, it was offering this to their clients where they can actually choose, look through their sperm and egg and choose what they wanted to pass on to their children as far as these go. Um, so that's where we're at right now is where we can actually do that and find out what we want to pass on to our children and pass that on of what we already have. Now in the future, future possibilities, we want to use what we call recombinant DNA technologies where we can actually pass on traits that we personally don't have but we want our children to have. So for example, let's say you have brown eyes and the person you're with has brown eyes but you want a child with blue eyes but neither of you carry it. So it's not even recessive and hidden within you or the other person. So neither of you carries the allele for blue eyes. It would be possible in the future, at least this is what we're looking to do, is to cut out the instructions for brown eyes from you, cut out the instructions for brown eyes from the other person and actually place it in, um, replace it with the blue-eyed allele. And if that was the case, then you'd be passing on DNA instructions that you or your partner don't even have. Um, so that's, and imagine what you could do with that. So you can, even if, let's say you're not intelligent <laughs> and your partner's not intelligent, but you want to have a really smart child where you can actually alter the genes that you pass on to the uh, child. And there's pros and cons for this. So I want you to think, what are some possible pros? What are some possible good things that can come from this? And what are some possible bad things that can come from this? Right, and then finally there's cloning. So right now it is actually possible that we can clone just about anything we want, even humans, but it hasn't happened yet. Um, there's a lot of ethical issues involved with this. Now let me explain what cloning is. Uh, there are actually clones that already existed before we started doing this artificial cloning. Identical twins, one of them is technically a clone. So when you have identical twins, one of them is actually the original and then you have a clone. Clone a clone is anything that has the exact same DNA as the original. So here, with cloning, um, when you're talking about identical twins or natural clones, there was a sperm and an egg, sperm fertilized egg, it divides, divides, one of those cells fall off and start making the exact same baby. It has the exact same DNA instructions and everything, that's why identical twins look exactly the same. And so they're forming, the, one that the cell that fell off, that second twin, is technically the clone of the original. So that's what a clone is. So here with cloning, we've actually learned that we can clone just about anything that we want. Um, we've actually developed the techniques to do that. It's not a perfect system that we have right now. And there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to cloning. The clone is not gonna have the memories of the original. That would be like expecting the identical twins to uh, have the exact same memories as each other. Um, so that's not what happens, that's sci-fi stuff. Also that clones would grow very rapidly. A clone would have to grow up just like the original had to grow up. So if someone made a clone of me right now, I would always be 34 years older than my clone. The clone would actually have to grow up and do the exact same things till it finally got my age. I will always be 34 years older than my clone. 
Now, um, in the future, we want to be able to clone extinct species and even humans. Um, so that's a possibility. And you might be thinking, why would we want to do that? Um, you know, the whole idea of immortality, being able to live forever through a clone or something like that, so that you would always continue on forever. Um, but there's also really positive prospects, such as possibly being able to clone organs. So when someone needs an organ transplant, instead of having to wait for someone to die or donate an organ, they would simply just clone the person's organ. So even cloning techniques can be used for that. And when you think about extinct species, that would mean bringing a species that hopefully that man you know has caused to go extinct that we could actually bring them back if we have DNA samples of that. Now in order for this to happen there has to be a surrogate. Um, so the way our cloning techniques work at the moment is basically you get an egg and you take the nucleus out. Now remember egg only has half a set of the instructions the sperm has to bring in the other half so when you take the DNA out that is an empty egg. And what you do is, and this is really, really bare minimum of, of the understanding of how we actually do cloning now. Let's say we wanted to clone me. I've taken the DNA instructions out of the egg. I could actually take one of my cells, put in a full set of instructions that make me. Think about it. If I take a skin cell, that has all the instructions that is me. I put that into the egg, um, put it in a certain chemical mixture with certain nutrients, add a little bit of electricity, and boom, it starts dividing into a baby that is an exact clone of me. Again, that's really, really basic, over basic, I would say, about how cloning actually works, but that's, that's what you need to know. That's what you need to understand. Um, so cloning techniques are at the point where we can clone just about anything we want, as long as there's a surrogate to carry um, the clone to term. So um, there would have to be someone who would carry the baby inside of them, another female. Um, they, they clone pets all the time now. Dogs, there's a place, and I think it's South Korea, where uh, they actually clone pets. So you can actually save DNA samples from your pet, and when your pet dies, send it over there. It's like $50,000, $100,000. I think it's 100000 actually. It's about $100,000 uh, to actually do that, um, which is interesting because designer babies are cost about $50,000. So it's 50,000 to design your baby, 100,000 to clone your pet. Um, so 100,000 plus in order to clone your pet. And they take that DNA, they p take out the information from an egg, put the DNA from your animal, creates an exact clone of uh, the animal. And they have to put it into a female dog in order for it to go through term and actually give birth to the baby and then grows up. Um, and what people have actually seen is that the clones have similar personalities and likings that their previous pet did. There's actually a guy that got his pet cloned and the pet uh, that was a dog, he actually got three clones out of it, I believe. Um, and all three of them, they reacted very similar to the ways that his original pet had acted, his original dog had acted. And they even, their favorite place, their favorite chair to sleep on was the exact same one that their original uh, dog liked to sleep on, and so on and so on. Um, so that's where we are with cloning right now, where we could pretty much clone just about anything we want.